I am El Mariachi. <laughs> also, Jack's back. He just put. He just brands everything with Jack is back. <laughs> it, it's uh, embroidered in, in the serape. My personal brand. Yes. R Ryden's Twitter handle is at Jack is back. <laughs> Hashtag Jack is back. Yes, this is how we go. <laughs> this is this is the, the, the travel method of champions. Oh, that is too cool. This must be the railroad. It would appear so. Likely part of Denver's old system. This city was a major transport hub in the early years of freight trains. This particular line appears to have been abandoned some time ago. It was originally constructed to transport supplies to an underground mm. factory. But now, it seems even the electrical system is no longer functioning. Yeah, it's pitch black in here. As a cyborg, I trust this is not a serious concern. I'm a cyborg? <gasps> so yeah, you have to use oh, AR yeah. mode. Oh yeah. yeah! That thing that I have, yeah. Yeah, my eyeballs! Well, eyeball and eyeball patch. A attacking takes you out of AR? <clears throat> yeah, combat takes you out of AR yeah. and so does uh, ninja gotta running. That's going to really stupid when, when you have enforced uses like this. Yeah, it's kind of dumb. Because, I mean, most of the time you're using AR to set up a combat, so that's fine. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It just seems dumb right now. Yeah, it's kind of dumb, like, you just want to open up a chest, and that takes you out of AR, and then you have to turn it back on. Um, this is the only section that does this thing, though. Okay. It's just this short little railroad section. Like, it is a stealth bit, you know, because you got some Mastiffs here, but even if you do alert that, them... That Mastiff thinks he's Mega Man. <gasps> uh, even if you do alert enemies, like, because I was trying to see if they would just ignore barrel rolling, because some... Uh, UGs do, but not Mastiffs. But yeah, like, even if you do get caught, it brightens up a little bit because okay, they're that's, glowing that's eyeballs. Handy. Yeah. Right. So I've been using it for, like, almost the entire LP, but I haven't mentioned it. But another trick with the dodge move uh -huh. is, um, it's a, kind of a secret move that's brought over from, um, Bayonetta called dodge offset um because like normally if you're in the middle of a combo and you parry your combo resets which sucks because the later hits in your combo do more damage um so if you have like a four hit combo you do the first two hits you dodge and then you press the button for the third hit you don't lose your place in your combo nice um so you can actually use the dodge's invincibility frames um, in tandem with uh, dodge offset to dodge through attacks and then continue your combo uninterrupted. Which lets you uh, actually kill some enemies way faster. Handy. Yep. And there's still more tricks with the dodge move. <laughs> there's lots of hidden things with the dodge move that I think are pretty cool. Um, there's also something hidden, a little hidden technique with blade mode you'll see later on. Not in this video, but when I get another weapon that makes it really good to show off. Well, I will be waiting patiently. <laughs> just sitting in the corner. Just waiting. Just just gonna sit down, cross my arms, and and wait for the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Oop. What the heck is going on right now? I I don't know. What are you doing? I, what's funny is uh I just got a new capture device, so the old one was kind of weird with colors and also gamma, so I could actually see what I was doing all the time. Now, the new one is much better, but also means black comes in a lot blacker. So I couldn't see what I was doing for a second. Um, and so I, to actually get around the gamma, I was like standing up really high to like <laughs> change the gamma on my uh, TV. But I'm trying to ro I'm just rolling past this Mastiff. But... Mastis aren't fooled by rolling. You uh, there's just a train. Figured I'm that right, out. I know I'm right next to a train car though, so you can't see me. Oh. Yeah. I I guess. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to stealth kill him. 
I'm nope. seeing some dust. <laughs> I'm some sparks. Oh, there's the sparks. Okay, that's cool. I do like seeing his silhouette during that brief explosion. <laughs> Another whole bunch of these little guys just chilling out in the ceiling. Those jerks. Yeah, there's one thing, like if there is a Revengeance 2, which I hope there is, because Kojima said he was really happy with the game. Even though it didn't sell nearly as much as like a normal Metal Gear Solid would. Um, right. If they do include stealth in the next one, I hope it's like with um, a separate playable character who has a different playstyle or something, so that they can have like slightly deeper uh, stealth, maybe, so Ryan can just be more combat stuff. Right. Because the the stealth. Because that worked out so well in Beautiful Joe Two. Oh no. Use it to Let's not mention mm. Beautiful Joe Two. Hmm. It's all right. Yeah, it's okay. It's not as good as the first Beautiful Joe. Mostly because they split up powers between two characters, and one was a lot more fun to play as. Yeah, I'm I, like, I don't think I would want it like 50-50. Also, another hidden Jet Li, yes. Jet Li gecko. Um, but just if they ever do brief stealth sections, like with a different character or something, but not like a big focus. George. Like, Sneaky George. Like with the DLC later on with the playable Blade Wolf, he has a little bit more of a stealth focus. Oh, okay. Yeah. With all that scouting ahead, he does. Yeah. Unfortunately, that Jet Li little dwarf gecko didn't drop any money this time. What a jerk. I hate him. Enemies uh, do have uh, multiple different items they can drop. Uh, I don't have any numbers on me, but... Like, in the strategy guide, they actually do list the percentage for the different drops all the enemies have. Nice. Uh, the, the little special dwarf geckos, it's something like 10% chance they'll drop money, maybe? All the enemies have, like, a really rare chance of dropping a lot of money, like 1%. Well, if you kill 300 enemies, it, it adds up. Mm-hmm. It adds up. Ooh. I wish the floating rank numbers illuminated everything. That would be nifty. That'd be neat. Another thing I hope it for, if there ever is a Revengeance 2, is because it'll be on next-gen consoles, I really hope they go crazy with chopping things up into little bits. More cuttable, more persistent chunks. Yeah, because like they when they showed like the tech demo for Knack for the PS4, they had like a billion physics objects going on at, all at once. Right. It would appear your only way forward is to return to the surface. You will exit into an evacuated commercial district. Security is heavy, but you need not worry about collateral damage when engaging the enemy. About time. Finally, I can cut loose. Proceed to the right from the exit. You will find a stairway on your right. Those stairs lead to a shortcut to World Marshal Headquarters. Do not be distracted by the advertisements. You are not here as a tourist. Sure. I'll just buy a quick souvenir or two for Rose and that'll be it. Raiden, we must hurry. Remind me to teach you about sarcasm sometime. I understand your attempts at humor. I simply do not find them entertaining. Wow. Blade Wolf, you're my favorite. Blade Wolf you're got my favorite. Blade Wolf definitely got taught about ice burns though. <laughs> there are no bananas in those boxes. Those boxes are a lie. I don't appreciate it. That's why you don't pay attention to the advertisements. <laughs> they lie. If you, uh, slice, like, a uh, fire hydrant, does it shoot out a bunch of water? No, unfortunately. Trick your enemies? I wish it did, but, uh, no. Um, like, there is some detail for when you're actually chopping some stuff up, though. Like, uh, in the prologue chapter, there are, mm -hmm. uh, street lights and, uh, traffic lights. And if you do cut those, you cut off the power, so, like, the lights will turn off. That's cool. But unfortunately, they don't have water shooting out of the fire hydrants. 
And also, if you kill somebody with a barrel, it's a non-lethal kill. <laughs> That's great. Oh, there we go. Get that guy, you get him. It's gonna get God. What is the purpose of these machines? Are they are they just supposed to be walking tanks? Or are Pretty they like much. repurposed load lifters and they strapped a gun on it or something? No, I think from the codec call for in chapter two, they, they are built to be like um because like the boss one you fight, it's in like pillbox mode. So it's it's used to be like a multi-purpose like tank thing and also like it's a punchy tank mobile cover thing. Yeah. Only in this setting do punch tanks sound like <laughs> something that every military needs. Oh, that's right. I just and, and another one of the codec calls. Um, they weren't designed to to punch. It's just that they had AI that learned that they could punch. <laughs> <laughs> No damage. Yeah, no water. Enemy ahead, Dryden! Avoid fighting if you can. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, there's a guy you can stab, but don't. I mean, really. Oh, yeah. Uh, Thankfully, this isn't one of the ones where they... Th there is no ranked fight here. I like that one where it's like, you got a stealth, but... You don't want a stealth if you don't want to miss out on a rank or anything. This one is just, you can stealth it if you want. Whoops. Let's get smoky. Thankfully, it doesn't really matter where you throw a smoke grenade for the most part, because the cloud is just huge. Yes, get the special arm. Just shave him. <laughs> shave him? I want you to slice him thin like a mandolin. Oh no. Suits for men! Well, we are at shopping center, so it, it would be great if there was like a, a boss gelato booth somewhere. Oh man! Like a food court. Actually, we did pet when I was in the last rank fight. Um, I did pass a Thunderbolt Cafe. Nice. Is there a stealth kill animation for these Hammer Bros? Um, it's the same as the other cyborgs. Okay. Um, same for their execution move. All cyborgs have the same uh, execution move. And also, some t every once in a while, they'll actually parry if you attack them for too long. Huh. Okay. Well, it sure has done them a lot of good. Yep. Oh, he's stuck up there. <laughs> uh. Gonna have to get him up. Get up there, just knock him back down. Whatever it takes, man. You're, you're a cyborg that gets the job done. <laughs> Sports outlet! Head for the next objective marker. Very helpful, boss. Thank you, uh, boss. We were lost without you. And, you know, just a, a nice health upgrade in the shopping center. Just cram that in me. Where else would you expect to find it? This is where you go for all of your needs. Ryan just picks it up and eats it like he's shaggy in a giant sandwich. Oh yeah, that's how they get them all stacked up. You, you, you take two stacks of regular health refills, like, like a deck of cards, mm -hmm. and you shuffle them, and there you go. Yeah. Boris, you got anything for me? Hmm? What do you mean? What do I mean? Intel, advice, help. What we always do over the codec. Well, yes, but in this case we had no official prep time. We have the map of Denver, but no briefing notes, no intel on enemy capabilities. I wish I could be of more help, but, well, I have nothing to work with. I'm sorry, Raiden. That's all right. I know you're doing whatever you can. But what about your robot dog friend? He's taking on scouting duty for you, yes? Why not try contacting him? I am setting goal markers on your Soliton radar. Use them to follow me through this area. Hmm. Good boy. 
I will ignore the condescension and take that as a compliment. You are welcome. How's it going with the brain units, Doc? Any problems? Oh, they could not be better. They're being kept at exactly 36 degrees Celsius with a steady, uninterrupted supply of oxygen and glucose. Synchronizing them with our equipment posed some difficulty, but everything's perfectly stable now. That's good to hear. What kind of VR are they getting? I've prepared very comfortable rooms for each and every one. It's not quite Schloss Neuschwanstein, but each one enjoys the equivalent of a four-star hotel suite. Every room includes an attached pool and an extensive library of on-demand video programming. Three meals are delivered daily, and while we're only able to do so much vis-a-vis -vis taste sensation, it should satisfy the psychological need for food, at least. Doesn't sound too bad. I wouldn't mind a little VR training like that for a change. Oh, be my guest. I'd like to experience it for myself, you know. But for now, it is available to cyborgs only. Exciting work is being done in the realm of invasive brain-machine interfaces. But there simply isn't much demand for it at the moment. I guess not too many folks are willing to stick electrodes in their brains just for a taste of VR. Uh, perhaps, but the sense of reality is considerably improved over nanomachine-based non-invasive methods. If prices were kept low enough, I imagine the video game industry at least would clamor for it. Who coded the virtual hotel? An assistant. He used to write VR programs for UGs, but now specializes in cyborg software. A bit of a niche right now, yes, but when brain-machine interfaces take off, it will be a big business. The children's accommodation is a reworked version of the original beta software he built. The room's 3D models are all made using free libraries. It couldn't have been easier. <laughs> I wish everyone loved their work as much as you do, Doc. They don't go stir-crazy, though? Cooped up in their rooms? There's little I can do about that. Creating an open world would take orders of magnitude more resources. What about communication? Another weak spot, yes. The NPCs available to us are all for military training purposes. It will be some time until we see VR characters capable of convincingly human interaction. Sadly, we're also not yet able to connect multiple brains to a single VR space. My assistants are operating virtual agents to give them a bare minimum of mental care. But our team is limited in size, and none of us are medical professionals, you know. They can't stay in there forever. They really thought about this VR hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at some DLC VR missions. Ah, yes, the Pillow Fight VR mission. Yeah. The Ordering Room Service VR mission. Yes! Gecko so, on a Balance Beam mission, hell yes. <laughs> so there are quite a few Dwarf Gecko missions uh, in DLC. Whee! Those are mines, don't touch them, they blow up and kill you. Uh, Oh, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life! <laughs> Pretty short, but it's, it's really fun to jump around as Dorfkin. Also, look at his dance! He gives you a thumbs up! Of dwarf geckos. First run, I guess! Also, doing these grab just a little bit extra money, because for next video I'm gonna have to buy something pretty expensive. Ooh. Whoop! Side scroller. <laughs> what are what are those? Do those like take time off or something? <clears throat> oh no, those those are just uh, battle point cubes. Oh okay. You just pick them up for extra battle points. You don't actually need to pick them up for rank. This one's still based entirely on uh, just time and whether or not you take damage. But if you're here to farm for battle points in the first place, you might as well farm for battle points. Yep. Whoa. <laughs> There are actually several side-scroller things, and not only just for dwarf geckos. Uh, huh. Some of the other playable characters get some side-scrolling platforming VR missions. It's kind of neat. Oh yeah, boogie down! Do it! <laughs> Thumbs up! That's just the best thing. Oh. Can, that, can there just be a dwarf gecko DLC? I would. I wouldn't mind a joke campaign that was just about the dwarf gecko oh, doing I would love just that. just a random dwarf gecko doing something wacky. That that's what Revengeance Two is. It's like Rosencrantz and dwarf gecko are dead, Biden. pretty much. Can I ask you something? <laughs> sure. What is it? Just wondering. 
Why'd you join Maverick in the first place? Uh, well, Boris and I go way back. Our first time working together was rescuing Sonny. That's Colonel Gerlukovich's granddaughter. He and Boris were good friends back in the USSR. Right, right. The Patriots were holding her? Yeah. I was mainly working with the PLA, but Boris was a huge help. His Russian military connections paid off big time. All his covert op experience, too. He wasn't working pro bono, of course, but he went above and beyond the call. The Patriots were a threat to everyone, not just America. He got that. And when Paradise Lost disbanded, he formed a new outfit and got them all work. Most of them, anyway, including me. Did you ever consider another line of work? Something non-military, I mean? I'm a cyborg, Courtney. What am I gonna do? Drive an ice cream truck? I can pass as normal from a distance, but up close, anyone can tell it's artificial skin. Good jobs aren't easy to come by these days, even for non-cyborgs. And I've got a family to feed. Besides, I've been fighting my whole life. It's just who I am. Sorry, I didn't mean to pry. It's fine, Courtney. No worries.